Okay friends, I told you I had more productivity tips for you on how I get it all done. So welcome to part two of my productivity videos. Before we get started, make sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my bonus tips with you. And if you haven't watched my part one of my productivity tips, definitely go check that out after this video. I will leave a link to it in the description box. Let's get on to tip number six. So tip number six is to utilize a block schedule. I don't know if you've heard of a block schedule before, but it is amazing because basically it kind of sets up my day to kind of have a routine. I am not somebody who's really good at saying at 6.45, I'm gonna do this. At 7.45, I'm gonna do this. At eight, it never goes the way I think it's gonna go. Every single day ends up so different than I think it's gonna be. So I definitely need to have that flexibility. That way I don't feel like I'm getting so off track. So being able to divide my day up into certain blocks gives me flexibility within those blocks. Another thing that's really, really Really helpful to me is to try to schedule appointments at the same time every week. It seems like when we go to the doctor's office, they're like, we have an appointment you can schedule for a Friday at five o'clock. And you're like, oh yeah, right when I'm going to make dinner, when the kids are all coming home and everybody's crazy and excited that the week's over, not going to work. And you're just like, but I'm at the mercy of them. But really it's like, could I push it off a week? I mean, if it's well visits and dentist visits and things like that, that I can plan early for, I will definitely make it work with my schedule. And Wednesdays for me are days that I can take kids to appointments because they have half days on Wednesdays. So I know if I do Wednesday afternoons, I can take them all without having to miss any school and I don't budge on it if I don't have to. Another thing I like to do is to have one specific day for grocery shopping and running any extra errands. This is the day where I get all my errands done, meet with people for lunch, do special things for me, you know, go get my hair done, those kinds of things. On Wednesdays are my day that I schedule appointments for the kids. It kind of revolves around what the kids are doing. It just really helps me to block schedule my whole week of certain days is when I do certain things, but also throughout my day. Right now, my block schedule is a little bit like 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. That is running kids to school pretty much all morning. You know, we get up, we get everybody ready, we eat breakfast and we make the rounds to school. We're going to multiple schools, so it's kind of crazy, but I know that that's my hours to do that. I am not on my computer. I'm not checking Instagram or anything like that. I am making sure I am focusing on my kids. So that's that block. The next block I know, okay, everybody's dropped off, but my three-year-old needs time with me. You know, if I don't give him that one-on-one -on -one time first thing in the morning, then the whole rest of the day, it's mom, 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 mom. So it's really important that I spend that next block with my son, having fun with him, as long as I'm focusing on him and not saying, just a second, let me check this. Just a second, let me just check this. Oh, I got a phone call. You know, that's my dedicated time for him. And then the next schedule is around noon, like lunchtime, I feed him lunch and then it's gonna be nap time. So I know that that's a great block before I have to get the kids from school that I can have for myself, for working, for being on my computer, for cleaning, things like that. So things that I need to get done, I know during those hours, that block is dedicated to that. Then around three o'clock is when I start picking everybody up from school and the dinner rush and after school rush and homework rush happens to about seven o'clock. And that block allows me to focus on the kids again and make sure we're getting homework done and dinner done and all of that stuff and just spending time with them. And then about seven to nine o'clock is kind of getting them in bed and ready for bed, making sure our lunches are all ready for the next morning and everything. And then about nine to 10, to maybe 11 sometimes, depending on what we're doing, watching the show, um, then that's kind of my time with my husband where we can relax and we can hang out, we can connect, do whatever we need to do, but that's kind of that block of time. And then it's bedtime. So that's how my block schedule works. You definitely have to adjust it for you. Tip number seven. Tip number seven is to make a chore loop. So for a chore loop, I don't know if you know what that is. I don't think anybody's probably heard of it because I feel like I made it up. So maybe not, let me know if I didn't, but we used to use a loop kind of process for when we would do homeschooling. And I was like, you know what, let's use this process for my chores because I always felt like I had a chore that never got done, like dusting. Enter in chore loop. And with the chore loop, I basically just leave a list of all of my chores, but I circulate them like a loop. And there's some that need to be done more often. I'll put that twice on my loop whatever I need to do. And I can add things. I can change it. We got flexibility here, but basically it just gives me a good running list of what I need to get done so that I don't have to think about it. The less I can think about, the more productive I'm going to be. So I can open up my phone. It's in my reminders. I go right to, okay, what's the next chore on my list? When I get that three hour, two hour block where I actually have time to get the things I need to get done, done. That's when I want to have to not think about what needs to get done. Because if I do that, I'm sitting here like, oh, I need to do the dishes and I need a vacuum. The stairs haven't gotten done in like a month, you know, but what do I do? What do I start with? I don't need to do that. That's just such a waste of time. So I pull out my chore loop. I know that I don't need to vacuum the stairs. I just did that a couple of days ago because it's at the bottom of my chore loop. 
I know I need to dust all the living rooms and then I need to, you know, sweep the back patio, whatever it is. You can go and you can just make a list of what needs to get done and you just keep them in rotation so that you're making sure everything eventually gets done in a loop. Which now brings me to tip number eight, which is probably my very favorite tip. Tip number eight is to utilize baskets. I I might have a problem. I have a lot of baskets in my house. I have baskets for blankets. I have baskets for kids' toys, for shoes, for everything. But the big thing that I love to use my baskets for is I keep a basket on the stairs because for some reason, getting all the way upstairs with all the things that need to go upstairs just never happens. So if I find little things that have been left out, I throw it in the basket, which is actually right there. But I put it in the basket and when they come home, they know, hey, I need to clean out that basket. And Often I will kind of give them all a warning, like, hey guys, come clean out the basket because whatever gets left in the basket gets donated. So they know, hey, if I want to hold on to that toy, I better go put it away. Otherwise mom's going to donate it. That way it's not like, mom, you stole my life because you took that toy away that one time when I was three and I loved it. I got it from McDonald's and played with it twice, but I needed that. And you're like, hey, you know what? You left it out, gave you a chance to take care of it. You chose not to, you decided it went to donate not me. I also keep a basket upstairs in my hallway. We kind of have this little nook thing that we keep it on and I will wake up in the morning. I will go through my room. I'll kind of go down the hallway, go to the kids' rooms, see if there's anything that needs to come downstairs. I'll bring it right downstairs and put everything away and then I will leave my basket downstairs in an accessible area so that as I'm cleaning up during the day and getting things done and I run across something that needs to go upstairs, I can throw it in that basket. That basket is mostly reserved for things that I know I need to put away, not really what the kids need to put away, that's what the other basket's for, but this is so that, you know, oh, I need to go and take this item that I bought that needs to go to my bathroom, throw it in there, it'll make its way upstairs at the end of the night. So at the end of the night, before I go up to bed, I'll grab that basket, I'll take it with me upstairs, I'll put everything away, and then the basket goes right back into the hallway again for the next morning. That's helped me a lot with not having to run up and down the stairs, like constantly trying to you know, put things away and then it never happens. And then all of a sudden I look over and the table's full of junk that needs to go upstairs and never makes its way up there. This is, you know, become a routine for me because I know every morning I run around and do that and bring it down and put it away. Let's face it, I could run up and down the stairs a million times a day. And I don't have time for that. And I'm just kind of lazy, but having the baskets there have helped me so much being able to just throw it in there. So it doesn't look messy. It's in a box. I don't have to worry about it. If people come over, it's like, it's fine. This is my box of stuff I got to deal with. And that's life. I live here. So another thing that's also been really helpful is right underneath that basket, I keep a smaller basket for laundry. Our laundry machine is upstairs. And when I'm downstairs doing dishes, cleaning, having kids going through potty training or kids running out to jump in the pool and leaving their clothes everywhere, it's really nice to have a laundry basket downstairs so that I'm not having to run that upstairs. So I do keep a basket just for dirty laundry so that at the end of the night, I can grab that as well, put it in the laundry room and get all that done. Moving on to tip number nine. Tip number nine is getting your kids to help. The best way to have your kids help out is to give them routines and give them expectations. I can probably do a whole video on that, on what we do and expect from our kids because it is quite a lot and we actually don't even do allowances for them. They're part of the family. They make a mess just as much as everyone in this family. It's everybody's job to help out. And what I've noticed is rather than getting the grumbles all the time of, I don't wanna do that, it's not my fault. They did this, they did that. We have just some very routine things in our house that the kids just do. We utilize zones in our house. So every kid gets a zone every week. We switch it every week so they don't get bored of it. They know that that is their responsibility to keep track of every week. It's been huge for us because all I gotta say is, hey, are your zones done? You're not playing electronics till your zones are done. Hey, you know, your zone's not looking too good. Can you go get that? And they know exactly what they need to do. I have lists of what is expected in that zone. My expectations of what clean looks like because let me tell you, kids clean, husbands clean are not the same as moms clean. So we gotta definitely lay out the expectations for them so they can succeed rather than fail. Also having routines for them, like they wake up and they brush their teeth, they get their clothes on, they make their lunch, they make their breakfast, they you know, get their shoes on and get out the door. That is, you know, a routine of in the morning. But when they come home in the afternoon, especially after summer, I noticed they came home and were like, grab your electronic, let's go. You know, I've been at school all day. It's my time to relax. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not our routine. Our routine is you come home, you clean out your lunchbox, you check your zone to make sure it's clean, you do your homework, and then if you have time, then you can get on electronics and things. But it's been nice to be like, hey, no electronics till your zone's done, your homework's done, your lunch is cleaned out, and you're ready for the next day. And the more we can implement that every single day, the more it helps. And when you can get them involved in things like helping make dinner, helping with the chores, helping to meal plan, even if our kids 
don't know these expectations and we want to implement a new expectation, you just kind of have to jump in there and start it and say, hey, this might be a little bit of pain at first, but we're going to do this and I'm going to make sure you're doing these things every single day until it becomes a habit for you as well. Those are all huge so that they can be part of the family and they can carry some of that load for you too because I think it's so expected for moms to be like, oh, you've you know, gone to school all day and you've done sports, you're so tired, just go and relax, I'll take care of it. You know what, no, this is a real world and our kids need to learn and know that they have responsibilities regardless of how tired they are, regardless of what they've done for the day, that they have choices to make. And if going to school and playing sports and their responsibilities are too much, then something in their life needs to change. Maybe they need to go to bed earlier. Maybe they needed to drop one of their sports. Something needs to happen, but this is reality. We have to teach our kids how to be responsible functioning adults someday and doing everything for them is not helping them to succeed in life. Now on to tip number 10. Tip number 10 is don't procrastinate. Now I'm not talking about, oh, I need to hurry up and put the clothes in the dryer. I need to go wash the car. Those things can wait. Those are things you probably shouldn't be procrastinating about. I'm talking about those little things that come into your life, like a schedule change or an invitation for something or an email you need to get back to. But if instead we RSVP for that event, or we put that event in our calendar right away, right when we see it, or mail comes inside, we open it, we read it, we either file it or do what we need to do with it or throw it away right away. It doesn't sit on our counter for days. Doing those kinds of things lets us get that weight off of our minds and our to-do list so that we're not overwhelmed with all the things we're trying to remember inside our heads because we're going to put it off to do it later. Those kind of things kind of actually go hand in hand with the one touch rule where we stop procrastinating on the little things that happen in our lives. So with the one touch rule, if you've never heard of it, basically you are touching something only once. So if you eat something, you finish eating it, you get your plate, you wash it, you put it right in the dishwasher right away. If you have a box that comes in, you open the box, you put the things inside it away, you break down the box, you put it in the recycle or wherever you wanna do with the box. Because if you're anything like me, I won't remember later. I need everything written down if I want to remember it. If I just get it and do it right away, then I know I don't have to come back to that later. And I'm not forgetting things because I forgot to write them down. So if you can get things that come into your life every day, deal with them right away, then that's less weighing on you, less stress and less things you have to remember. Okay, so my bonus tips. Now, hearing what I'm saying is only half the battle. I gave you guys a lot of information here, especially if you watched my part one, but we won't become more productive if we don't actually apply these tips. One thing that Sean Cannell says from the YouTube channel, Think Media, is you've heard it said that knowledge is power. That's not true. Knowledge is just knowledge. Until you put that knowledge into action, that's where the true power comes from. I'm kind of paraphrasing. That may not be exactly what he said. I'm not gonna go through all of his videos to figure out if that was for sure the right one, but you get the point. And Sean Cannell, if you're watching this, first of all, awesome. Second of all, thanks for letting me borrow that. And a disclaimer, I don't always do all of these productivity tips every single day. I wish I could, I'm not perfect. I know that if I could do all of them, my day probably would be so, so much better, but sometimes we still all fall short, which leads me to my second bonus tip, to just trust in the Lord. I have six kids, I'm very busy, I'm doing everything that I can, but I'm still gonna fall short sometimes. But I have to know that my family is in his hands and that while I'm trying to be the best mom I can be, ultimately they're in his hands and being taken care of. If we trust in him, he will make our path straight. And I truly believe that because in all the areas where I fail, I know he is picking up the slack. So those are my tips for you. I hope that helped you a lot. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. I hope you have a beautiful day. Until next time, bye.